My watch. Oh yeah, your your clock's fast. Go for it. Oh. Sorry, I just had a little scare. I was with um. Are we live? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear the story later, yeah. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> the audience wants to know, Julia. So I guess you all know that Julia's here today. <laughs> <laughs> And here we are at another tie off. Somebody asked me, have, have, have you keep in score at, at how many of these you won and how many I have? I, we haven't been on it. I yeah, have no I, idea. I don't either. I know that I'm, a, I'm like one out of five or six, maybe, <laughs> but I, I, I haven't kept, I haven't kept score. No, no, no reason to. But this one's a fun one, Tom. Clink hammer. Well, yeah, I'm. I'm curious. This is your pick. I'm curious as to why you picked this, and do you know a little bit about the uh, the originator of it and about the fly? Because this is not a fly that I fish very much. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I know it's Hans von Klinken, and mm -hmm. uh, hence the clink hammer. Um, I've watched his video, him tying it, which I, I would suggest everybody do. Just um, you know, everybody has different techniques, and and uh, I I use it quite a bit. And we, and we were talking before we went live. Um, I use it particularly in smaller sizes, 16s and 18s, and mm -hmm. yeah. it's one of those flies that to me is actually a lot of fun to tie in those smaller sizes, like 18s. Just look yeah. look, look absolutely gorgeous, mm -hmm. and. And I don't, I don't think it's especially realistic. I, I you know, um, some people tie it with a trailing shuck. Other people I, I know, like the original, didn't have a shuck. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of use the body to be the body and the shuck at the same time. Um, I love the fact that the original has uh, true peacock curl uh, mm -hmm. underneath the wing post because I think peacock curl just works for everything. Mm -hmm. And and it not. Uh, not a difficult fly to tie and you, you can crank them out fairly fast change the body color if you want change the hackle color even change the wing post color if you want um, i'm going to be using uh white polypropylene for the wing but um not me know, no no i no. saw that on your little sample that uh you uh kind of went off the list there buddy uh, you go uh, off the list all the time on my <laughs> patterns. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I'm not going to use. I I have a very different uh, posting technique that I that I've started using over the last couple of years, and uh, it kind of requires white thread. Uh, so I changed from black thread to white thread. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was wondering why you specified black thread. I'm using tan tan oh so <laughs> you didn't even pay attention to what no I was no, no not at no, all no no, no. And, well I'm, I'm tying what 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 could be you know the fly formerly known as clink hammer or something but yeah. it's, it's it's the silhouette's the same yeah it also looks great as a uh i i apologize to andy carlson the purple haze inventor but uh as a purple haze it works just just great and and uh and to speed things, if you if you have a, a Cree or, or anything in that kind of family that that's, you know, sort of sort of could imitate uh, grizzly and brown mixed, uh, then, then it's kind of even easier because you're only using one hackle feather. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. looks great. Purple body, big, big white post for a wing, real visible and, and, and works real, real well. How is this for holding up? A, some, somebody's going to ask. How is this for holding up uh, a nymph as a as a dry dropper? Uh, not great. I, I I mean, there's there's a lot of hook there. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're tying it on a check nymph hook. I'm going to try to tie it on a true clink hammer hook. And yeah, of course you yeah, are. Of course I am. And it's it's a good bit of iron. Plus, you you also rather than having some kind of tail that would create surface tension and add buoyancy to the rear part of the fly you know where the mass of the hook is in the curve there's nothing there it hangs yeah, below yeah. the water surface so right you yeah. really just have the the parachute the hackle and kind of the parachute post to hold it up so not yeah. quite as much buoyancy as other patterns and, and so yeah not not great for that dry dropper 
you could hang a little pheasant tail or something. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Even a, you know a little zebra midge with a teeny yeah. bead on it would be just mm -hmm. just fine. But uh, okay. uh, one of the cool things that, that I I like about it, kind of for that reason, is that that hook um, drop down the the way it is really helps kill the fly a lot. And and so you when, when you cast it, it it almost it lands perfectly almost every single time where. Whereas some flies, e even just regular parachutes, you know, a cast, wind gets it or whatever, it's going to tip over on its side. Not that the fish really care all that much, but, you know, it's kind of going to be wing pose down or wing pose flopped over to the side. Uh, this one rarely does it. it, it, it uh, that that weight just helps it parachute down really nicely. It's not and nice for people who have real clink hammer hooks instead of those of us who have to substitute. <laughs> All right, who goes first? Who goes first? You pick the fly. Who, who's, who goes first? Uh, why don't I? I'll get cameras turned on then. If you give me just a second. Well, you um, want me to go first then? Is that what you're saying? Oh, you're, you're all turned on. You're ready to go. Well, here, I'm, I'm ready. I'm to always go. ready, Flagler. I'm, okay. I'm way ahead of you. Okay. <laughs> Let me just get focused. I'm ready to go, I think. There we go. So, clean camera hook. Uh, they're kind of interesting hooks. This is a size 12. And if you if you look at it, a, a true clean camera hook has got this little bend in it, and so get it, it just a little more up. So this the post is going to go straight up from that that little kink, um, and and then all this stuff hangs below the water surface. So that's sitting in the film, and that all hangs below. So you know the trout can see it really well. It looks like something that's pretty vulnerable, I guess. I am going to start off with just UTC 70 denier in white. It's I, I tie this a little differently. I post post it uh, differently than most people do. So uh, white is going to end up working out in the end. And I'm just going to get that started on the hook shank and snip that off. Now, uh, I just know from experience that a card width segment of polypropylene uh, floating yarn is, you know, I'm wasting a little bit, but not too much. Um, and I grab it by about the third right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread all the way back to that little kink. And right there, I'm going to take a few wraps rearward. I don't want to let go of this thing because re-gripping it can be kind of a pain. And I'm going to cut it off at an angle and just get those contained. I'm going to keep going here, Tom, because this yeah. is kind of do all your, one piece. Do, do your next step, Tim. All right. And so for me, what I do with the wing post on these guys, I if, if you've been watching my YouTube channel lately, I, I pretty much do this with all my parachutes really gotten to enjoy the technique so i have the polypropylene what i'm going to do is i'm going to twist it counter or clockwise as if i'm looking down on it although it really doesn't matter i've tried it both ways but when i bring it over it's going to furl on itself and you just grip right down there at the base take a few wraps rearward and then i'm going to go up and snip that off don't cut your thread oh i know or i don't want to snip that post either that was disastrous right there Let's see if i can we'll clean that up later but so what what that does anyway is it's a just a nice the starting to make it sturdy the wing post and the other thing, you guys might have noticed this when you're tying with polypropylene. If you don't furl it like that, you just have these fibers that kind of get all over the place and, and your thread can get caught in it. And so this kind of gets rid of that. But other than that, just, just one more way to, to do a parachute. And uh, why don't you go, Tom? Okay. And of course, I'm going to start differently. <laughs> um, I'm using... Uh, a check nymph hook because I don't have any clink camera hooks and I like this hook 
It's an Orvis tactical uh, check nymph hook. And I'm going to put it in my vise. How am I doing so far? Oh, uh, great. I love that uh, hook, by the way. They are. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. just, just move this a little bit. Okay. And I, as usual, I'm going to do my post differently than Tim. I'm going to use tan thread because I'm actually going to make a tan wing. And there's a reason that, and if you notice, this check nymph hook has kind of a spot right about here, like a third of the way back where uh, the hook the hook starts to curve down. So I'm going to get the same effect as, uh, as Tim's clink hammer hook, but it's just a little more continuous bend. And I like tan in my wings, uh, my post, just because I think that white is a little bit too stark and there isn't much in, in the, um, the world of trout that they eat that's white other than some moths. And I, I just think that um, tan is, a, is, a, is highly visible, but it's just a little more subtle and a little more insect-like. And, you know, when I tie chubby Chernobyls, I do the same thing. Uh, I, I use tan. So I'm using macrame yarn, which I believe is polypropylene. Um, Whatever this stuff is, it, it sheds water extremely well, and it floats. So I suspect it's polypropylene. Uh, it's cheap. I hate. I don't like buying fly tying materials at craft stores because I like um, I like supporting fly shops. And actually, I don't buy this from craft stores. I buy it from uh, Dom Swantowski at um, at um, Trout Bitten. Uh, Trout Bitten. Uh, yep. Because I use it for my uh, Dorsey indicators, my yarn indicators, but it work. It makes a great wing, so I use it both for indicators and for um, and for wings on chubby Chernobyls or things like this. And I found that I, I'm oh, I'm also tying this on a fourteen. I found that two strands is about right, and you can see this stuff is kind of all. Maybe I'll use three strands. I'm going to use three strands. I like a big wing. Um, I'm just laying those three strands down, and then I'm going to take this um, finger brush from Hairline. And you can use a, a flea comb or whatever, but this is very quick. And that'll, that'll um, fuzz up those fibers. As I think of, you know, a, a little bit of, a little bit of, of kink in the wing. Uh, Helps it hold fly floating. Seems to shed water better. I just give it a few brushes. And then I'm going to trim one end of this. Just to make it easier to work with. And then come back over to my vise. And of course, totally different method from Tim. Tim's method is is good but mine's good too so i'm gonna i'm gonna um make it go about halfway down the hook and i'm going to give it like three or four turns and then i'm gonna taper it and i find that you can let go of this but and i'm just gonna taper it a little bit I'm not that talented. Yeah, I know you aren't. That's that's your problem. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a tapered body so I don't have to mess with uh, a, a dubbing noodle that I have to worry about getting the right taper because I'll taper, I'll taper the body. And as Tim says, these fibers do get in the way. And so I will... Come down, finish that off, and then I'm going to go all the way around the bend because I want this to hang, this body to hang in the water. So I'm going to take my body all the way down to there, and then if I need to, you know, I, I need to just taper this a little bit with my thread. 
don't worry about extra turns of thread. A few turns of thread aren't going to make your fly sink any worse than it normally would. And then I'll come up to about there. And I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that there for now. Wow. What? What? Oh, what? Just, just, just wow. <laughs> what? Sometimes what? a wow is just a wow. Are you are are you just are you just blown away by my technique, Flag? I, I am. I it yeah. is world class. <laughs> <laughs> should I go? Should I go now? Yeah, you're my turn. I'm I'm waiting for oh, you. Uh, <laughs> are you ready? Are you not ready again? I, no, I I'll be ready in just a second here. Gotta get zoomed out. Make things look look good. Ish. Brian has a question. If I bend a curved shank hook to get the same look as a clean camera, would that compromise the hook strength? I don't think so. Yeah, and I, I've seen a lot of a lot of people do it. So yeah, um, you know, I, I, I have. I a, imagine I have, it would in some incremental way, but but you know, it, it's it's kind of like knot strength. The difference between you know, 96% and 97% is, is, I mean, is that really significant? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not tarpon fishing with these. Yeah, cameras, so. yeah. Um, all right. So I need some dubbing. That's what I need. And what I'm going to use, get this put away real quick. Out of the way that can go away. Oh, we're, uh, we're, super we're, we're watching you clean up your fly tying bench. Oh, <laughs> you know, people, people, you have are. Got, people, people have got lives, Tim. They don't need to yeah. sit here and watch well, you clean up your well, bench. Well, I have you all here, though. Check out the wood. <laughs> on, on This is a new fly tying bench for me that I'm just over the moon. It's from a uh, good friend, Drew at Tiecraft. Amazing stuff. I'm so happy. I can't even stand it. Um, anyway, tan, super fine dubbing. Uh, yeah, it is tan. And super fine is kind of, I, it's so fine. And I believe that it does have some floating characteristics uh, more so than, or at least it doesn't absorb a whole ton of water like some other dubbing materials do. But what I'm going to do, kind of like I do with all my dubbings, is I'm going to pull the fibers up parallel-ish to my tying thread, kind of like so. And then just start and start at the top part, but leave that part undone. And then just weave the next clump in with the first. And this stuff, I you know, with so many materials, so many dubbing materials, it's really easy to overdub. But the, the super fine is so fine, uh, you, you really have to kind of work to get a decent sized dubbing noodle on your thread. Now, let me zoom in just a little bit here. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to go like that. We got to so, wait you focus your camera, too. Yeah. Is that focused? Uh, so we, we, we actually have a quite a bit of real estate to cover here. Um, I, I want to get way down, way down in there, like almost to the hook barb, kind of right there. And... As you can see, I, I'm kind of creating a very thin body here. There's a little something missing in there, isn't there? And I know that Mr. Rosenbauer will get on my case if he saw that. Uh. And so even with that huge dubbing noodle, I've kind of barely covered that body. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there as, as that for the for the body of the fly. Um, we'll, we'll take care of the thorax later. That looks okay. But yeah, even that long long dubbing noodle was just barely enough to fill in that space. You're up. Okay. Of course, I'm gonna do it differently. <laughs> okay. So uh, oh, I'm oh. gonna I'm using Orvis uh, Spectre so Blend. Is some something wrong? No, I. Oh, good. Uh, this is very similar to superfine dubbing. In fact, it might be the, it might be the same, the same stuff. And I'm going to use 
kind of an olivey tan, um, just because uh, the the stark tan itself looks like a few things, but I think that an olivey tan looks like a lot more things that fish eat. Anything from a from terrestrials to caddisflies to mayflies. So I don't know how the color looks there, but it's it's kind of an olivey tan. And it, I think it's very similar to the Superfine W. And unlike Tim, I like to fuzz it up. And so um, if there's any knots or snarls in there, you want to pick them out. Because I, I like to just use little wisps of it one at a time, not a, not a long piece as Tim does. Just a, It's a different way of doing it. And I'm going to, and I don't need... I don't need uh, to taper this noodle, so I'm I'm just gonna just gonna add it in kind of a continuous non-tapered strand because I already got it tapered on my body, and like Tim, uh, I'm I'm making it nice and thin because you can with this dubbing. It's so easy to work with. Don't you love working with it, Tim? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just you know, if you have if you have trouble dubbing, uh, try this, the super fine or the Orvis Spectre Blend dry fly dubbing. It's just you can see how tightly that goes on. And I'm going to double wind uh, this body because it's easier to get a it's easier to fix your taper. Uh, it's like you know the old way of uh, winding a floss body going back and then going forward. It's easy to fill in places where you might have, you know, a little, a little gap. And what you can do when you're doing this is if you want your body a little tighter, you pull on it and put some tension on it. And if you want it a little thicker, you can ease up on your tension so that you can control how you apply that dubbing. And I got a little bit too much there. And I don't know if I can get away with it. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to just bear down on this. Yeah, that's probably the best way. What? Because it looks like a lump? Okay, forget it. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna get rid of it. Cause I know that you're gonna you're gonna make fun of my Kardashian friend there. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm glad you did it that way, though, Tom. I haven't, I haven't dubbed. I remember seeing people dub like that years ago. That that is yeah. taking it old school, and it, it's it's it is old that, school. Yeah, but it's good good to have in the toolbox, you know. Is um, it is I, double I, winding a body. It makes yeah. a really durable body too. Yeah. It's less likely no, to like fray. That. And notice, I haven't posted my wing yet, people. Um, because as Tim says, this stuff gets in the way. Should I post it now or should I stop there? Whatever your little heart desires, Tom. <clears throat> I think I'm going to post it now. So I'm going to come forward. I'm going to lift that up and put a little thread in front of it. You don't have to lift it up too much because when you post it, it'll go straight up. And then I'm just going to go around the base with my bobbin up a ways. I don't know how far you would say, but then you just you just form in a nice smooth base there. I think that's far enough. And then I'll come down and I will I will let you go now. Already? Yeah, I got it. I'm gonna the practice. reason I'm turning cameras off and on is it's so hot in here. We're I worry about the cameras overheating, so they're going off and on today. Anyway, um, right at the beginning we said uh, for the thorax is peacock curl. You, I think you could put peacock curl on anything. Uh, and, and just make it a better fly by having peacock curl. It's just mm -hmm. just kind of one of those universal fly tying things. And, uh, iridescence, I don't know, little, little teeny fibers. 
Uh, but I, I have three strands here, and I'm going to cut off just the brittle tips because they have a tendency to, to break on you. And I'm just going to, right behind the post, just get that stuff locked down. But I am going to move my tying thread back. You guys are probably sick and tired of watching me do this. So I, I'm winding behind my tying thread to keep those pearls nicely sandwiched together. You'll be happy to know I'm going to do it that way too. You are. Oh. I've, I've, I've resisted it for too long because <laughs> and, it is a great, it is a great way of doing it. And even though I learned it from you, I, I have to, <laughs> I still have to do it. And so I've got my little thorax there. Now, one of the things I, I want to get my thread back to the post. And so I am going to, cord my thread up. I'm going to give it a good clockwise spin as I'm, as I'm looking down on it and uh, doing a couple things here. This, this stuff kind of gets buried into the peacock curl and I'm, I'm effectively counter wrapping the peacock curl with my thread, just, just to, to give it a little bit of uh, protection against sharp trout teeth. And then I'm just going to take a couple of, of wraps around the post like that um and kind of the next step for me is a sort of a biggie do you want to finish your thorax tom before i move on or should i keep going i want you to keep going okay um this and i know a lot of people kind of freak out when when you you move a fly in the, in your tying vise but this just really works for me and I, I, I don't mind moving it. It, um, it just, it's just doesn't, doesn't bother me that much. Uh, reorient just a little to keep that like that. So for, I'll just go right into it for hackle. Oops. Whoops. Fade to black. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the little guy overheated. <laughs> That's why. Oh. Uh, so we're not. Yeah, I was worried about that. Um, you get points off for overheating cameras. Okay, you. sorry. Well, I just so happen to have the beautiful older cape, medium gray, kind of lots of uh, lots of stuff going on. Uh, mm. Charlie Collins, um, really neat neat stuff. I have a hackle feather here and it's slightly oversized. It's, it's more like a, a, a 12 and a half is, is a po almost a 10. And I have the shiny side facing me. I'm going to take a bunch of the fibers off both sides. And then I'm going to peel just a few more off the top edge. I'm going to kind of lay it on here just to get a measurement for myself and carefully snip that off are you gonna mind this shiny side down i thought you no always... oh no okay. no well no, by the way be... that you trimmed that it looks like you are no i i hope not it might spin on me and go that way but and so i'm gonna wind up first up and then back down and it is with any wing post kind of really really key to keep to keep that thing smooth any little I hate to say it, any little lump or bump in there can can make your your hackle stem go cattywampus and it just it messes the whole thing up um so i'm, I'm just going to keep on going here tom yeah anyway, go ahead. yeah it it looks like that that uh nice little space is going to work out for me and again here too just to keep those wraps together i'm winding behind my tying thread all right, going up the post. Oh. Okay, and I like clink hammers kind of kind of on the heavy hackle side. So six, seven wraps maybe. And I'm going to anchor. You got to be a little careful because that wing post is not altogether super strong at this point. Even though it's furled and it has the stem up through it and thread wraps. You still have to be a little careful. You can see it wants to pull down. Going to grab it.
and whip finish above the hackle. And that way, I got one little wonky fiber down there. Let me just get cleaned up here, if you would. I don't know what oh, that could be. See. Well, let me cheat a little. I'll get rid of these before we get in the frame. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, no, no, she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, is we're, we're. Is that, a, is that a focus, Tim? Okay, we'll get there. Or, or, or it's a really bad fly. <laughs> <laughs> we got one little fiber that's sticking down. But the, the cool part about doing it like this is you can see there's no like thread collar underneath there, which I really like. You just get this really smooth underside to the fly, which is what the, the trout are going to see. And yeah. all I all I do, and it's absolutely essential, guys, you, you don't just leave those thread wraps bare if you're doing it like this. You, you will be tragically disappointed. Um, but a drop of nice liquidy head cement sinks down into the thread wraps and then you can probably see it going down into the into the post and all in and around that hat those hackle barbules and um makes for a really really tough fly and just to finish it up i'm gonna go just take my scissors and snip the very top of the wing post and you know it's it's been under control the whole time you know you don't have any of those wispies but it wisps out uh real real nice like that and that's my wow. clink hammer yeah. very nice very Thank nice you. um fun to tie too for me anyway uh, i enjoy them all right so i'm gonna do it differently as usual <laughs> I got overheating cameras. Oh my. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to use a saddle hackle. Um, you know, these whiting with these whiting 100, you can get them sized. And I find saddle hackles are nice for parachutes because they, um, they have a thin stem and they're a little bit easier to control. Can't always get the color and the size you want, but um you know they're they're all one size so you can get a package and and what i do usually to help control things is i'll snip a couple pieces because using that really long saddle hackle um not, and i'll use these for other flies but using that really long saddle hackle can be can be a pain and then i'm going to strip fibers from the base just like Tim did give myself a fairly long stem and then I am going to also pull a few off the top side this is the shiny side here and then I am going to start and I want this stem to come up. I have to make sure it's the right. I want to have this stem to come up so I can start with a bare stem. And then I'll catch that stem there. And I will wind to the base and then wind up. I'm going to post it again, this time with the hackle. So. As you can see, I'm, I'm going to be doing it differently than Tim. And then I'm going to leave that. And at this point, there's no reason to make my wing, uh, keep my wing this long. I keep it long now because it's easier to control the post. But once I, once I got the post done, makes it easier to whip finish and to do everything else. I just cut the wing off now. Let's see. Yeah, right about there. I don't. I don't like too high of a wing on this on a clink hammer. And my hackle's just sticking out here to the side. Then I'll come back right behind the wing. 
and I'll take, I can't believe I'm doing this the same as you, but I'm going to use three fibers of peacock curl as well. Now you notice Tim used what's called strung peacock curl, which comes in a package. I like to use the eyes because you get a range. In other words, for tying smaller flies or for a thin peacock body, you have hurl down at the bottom. For bigger flies, if you want thicker hurl, you come up toward the eye. And then if you're going to tie quill bodies, the stuff in here right next to the eye is where you tie quill bodies. So by using, by uh, getting um, uh, these eyed tails, it's easier to select exactly which peacock hurl you want, whereas if you get it in a big package, uh, it's, it's difficult to get to get what exactly what you want. And then you always want to even up the tips, and they're very weak at the tips, as Tim is always saying, so you want to even those up. And then I will start right at the base of the wing, tie in my hurls back to where the body stopped. And you want about equal amount of thorax in front of behind the wing. And then I will, just like my hero, Tim Flagler, I will use that thread behind there to keep. You are my hero, Tim. You know that. <laughs> and I'll probably take two turns in front. And then it helps to hold that hurl straight up when you tie it off. Otherwise, you're going to get peacock hurls uh, in your eye, not your eye eye, but your hook eye. And I lost my scissors, there they are. And trim that, take a couple more turns, just to make sure that peacock hurl is secure. Now, you can do a couple things, you can Put the fly like Tim did, which I will do here because it's easier to show. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cord my thread. I think you gotta I'm... move your camera, Tom. Oh. Frame. Sorry. I'm not gonna go through that peacock hurl. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go right to the base of the wing. Sometimes I go through the peacock curl, but I'm not going to today and take a turn around the wing. The other way to do this, if you don't want to take your hook out of the vise, is to just turn your whole vise. If you have pedis, if you have a pedestal vise, you can turn your whole vise uh, so that it faces you, and then you get the same, you know, the same angle, same working angle. And I like, unlike Tim, I like the shiny side going down and if you tie parachutes you know that the first turns don't always go the way you want you have to you have to kind of and i can't get it to go the way i want this is a, a very annoying hackle there it's going to go. There we go. You sometimes have to fiddle with it a few times. And I'm going to go down toward my thread instead of going up like Tim did, just because I want to do it differently. Just to show you that you can do it both ways. And I'm going to pack it right in there and then bring my thread around and kind of kind of work it in there try not to bind any hackle fibers down about three turns and then snip the uh end of your hackle at this point you're gonna hit you're gonna all if you do it this way you're always gonna have some fibers sticking down but don't worry about it um wait till after you wet finish And then 
an, an extended reach or a long whip finisher helps. And just try not to bind down any fibers. Four turns. Carefully pull that. And then invariably, if you do it this way, you always get uh, fibers that are going to be sticking down. So I just turn the fly upside down and I come in. Some of these are like the ones that were uh, hanging out with the tip of the hackle. Some of them just got, got bound under. And I just trim them out. And then, uh, as with Tim, because I always do this, what Tim does, I'm going to, um, I like water-based head cement for this uh, because it's, it's very runny and it gets down into the, it gets down into the, um, the hackles. And I'll just put a little drop in there. Maybe a couple drops. It's not a bad idea to hit the head and then hit the top. Give the top of it just a little bit of so the hackle doesn't slip up on you. So a little more little more head cement and I will adjust my camera and there it is a little shorter than yours a little shorter and stubbier stubby yeah I I, I kind of I like the long and lean. That that's uh, yeah kind of been a been a thing for me with the clink cameras. I know everybody has a different style. I, I just uh -huh. um, I like the thin thin tapered body hanging down. I like them a little stubbier just because uh, this time of year, I I kind of want my flies to look like terrestrial. Oh okay. Yeah, and I I. I in that in that time. vein, Tom, I I, I think <laughs> that clink cameras do kind of a remarkable job of imitating a whole bunch of things. Not yeah, not just mayflies. I, I yeah, I get the feeling that, that, that you know. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and it, could, even, it could be a could be a terrestrial. It could be a yeah, you know, large midge larva hanging yeah. in the film. It could it, be emerging it, cat. Could be an emerging caddis. Yeah. Yeah. Very likely, you know, my, I mean, mine looks more like an emerging caddis than a mayfly, actually, unless it's a really stubby mayfly. So, yeah. Yeah, neat, neat fly. Great, great invention. Um, way to go, Mr. Von Klinken. Yeah. They're voting. They're voting already? They're voting. I, I didn't even primp. Michael says he sees fibers in the hook eye. I think both of us have a few fibers in the hook eye. Yeah. Michael, that can be that can be fixed. Oh, I got just a lit come on, Michael. <laughs> Look at that. You can shove some 8X right through there. Yeah, how's that, Michael? A few poly Michael, you have you happy now, Michael? Yeah, geez, Michael, <laughs> come on. There's one in every crowd, you know. Yeah. So. Ah. Uh, Slender or beer belly, says Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm seeing more I'm seeing more Tim's, but Ir Irma Irma voted for me. 
but I'm Go seeing Irma. awful. Um, now people don't forget, don't don't uh, don't vote here because your vote won't be counted if you just all those Tims, all those Tims that you're putting in here, unless you voted on the on the doodad, it won't be counted. Would you tie this in any other color for panfish? Greg, I don't think you need to worry about panfish. I'd tie it in any old color you feel like. <laughs> yeah. I imagine panfish would munch this like oh, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's business. Little bluegill. Uh, I think you'd spend more time de-hooking them than anything else. Uh, Donut Hole keeps asking you. It looks like you've added a rubber O-ring on the handle of your right bobbin. May I ask where you got that O-ring, and how did you fix it to said handle? I will tell you. Um, I, I can't show you one of the bobbins because I don't have it out. But right bobbin um, also makes something called a half-inch mag. And as the grip, they have this O-ring. They have a bunch of them, probably six or seven or even eight of them. And they... Uh, so I just, I dismantle, take a pirate, a few off of there, but you can get these O-rings for next to nothing, like at Harbor Freight and, 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 uh, thing, things like that. The reason I use it is I go, it, cause I, and I'll end up putting all these materials back in a bag, in a Ziploc bag, cause I need to tie a bunch more, but I go like this and slip it over with the thread and ah. so the thread can't come unspooled and I just dump it in a Ziploc bag. And, and then when you're ready to tie, you just go like this, pull the, pull the thread out and you're ready to tie again, put that back on there. So yeah. Tricks of the pros. Yeah. You just, you just got to get the right size O-ring and, and um, again, they're, they're, they're cheap. I, I, I think you get a selection for like five bucks. That's got every size O-ring ever made. Uh huh. Oh, it looks like I'm going to get crushed on this one. Really? Yeah. You're on mute, Julia. All right. Are we ready? It's been yeah. kind of a it's been kind of a roller coaster watching the votes come in. Uh, really? It was really strong one way, and now it's pretty much down the line. Uh, wow, You're making me yeah. nervous. Maybe just one, maybe one more little spin. will <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too late. <laughs> and the winner is Mr. Flagler. Yes. Congratulations. Very, close, very, very, very close. I think it is. It's like 56 to 44 is the. Wow. Final. wow. I know. Wow. Super close. So. What? And that, I, I had fun, Tom. I don't know about you, but that's to, to me, that's a fun tie and. Um, are we under an hour, Julia? Or are we? Yep, we're under. Yeah, so well, I always well, have fun. I always have fun tying with you. I always have fun tying yeah. with you. And I learn. Well, I learn from you. I had fun. I too. learn from you, Tim. Well, I, Tom, I learn from you. I, what did you learn from me? Th throw because... throw you under the bus, age-wise, but. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, <laughs> when, when I first started tying, it was. Uh, I, I, I think they were yours. Those, those, uh, three wit little three wing, three ring binder hooks. There was a brown one and a green one. Yeah. Those weren't mine. Those John Harder did those. Those. Yeah. That's, yeah. They, they were my first and I, I still have them. I still use them. That, that amazing stuff. I, well, maybe I didn't learn from you. What's the guy's name again? I'm going to give John him a call. Harder. John Harder. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell everybody it was you. Jeez. No. No, fun stuff. Yeah. Any other questions anybody has? We, we're still under an hour. So, oh, yes. by the way, by the way, uh, this Wednesday at 5, 5 p.m. Eastern time, um, I, I am um, facilitating hosting a discussion with uh, Simon Perkins, the Orvis president and CEO, Hannah Perkins, who's one of our product developers, and Benny Blanco from Isla Morada. We're talking about um, 
recent developments in the Everglades and also the film that uh, Orvis just released called Follow the Water. It's a really cool film. Uh, it, if you haven't seen it yet, it follows a drop of water pretty much from the headwaters of the Everglades north of Orlando down to Florida Bay. And it shows uh, all, the, all the, the, the issues and some of the solutions uh, that have been implemented already, but it, it just really, uh, it's, it's a great way of understanding the, the issue in the Everglades with, uh, with fresh water and the, and the uh, too much fresh water going out to the either estuary, the Caloosahatchee and the, um, uh, uh, what's the other river? Oh my God. The Caloosahatchee and Julia, help me. Caloosahatchee and the. I, I'm having a, a brain issue, a senior moment here. Saint Lucy, Saint Lucy, yeah, Saint oh. Lucy. Sorry, um, and why they why they get too much water and the Everglades doesn't get enough, and how uh, some of the some of the projects that have been implemented and what what the future holds. So. Um, Benny is uh, an extremely passionate uh, advocate for Everglades restoration. His livelihood depends on it. He's a guide in the Florida Keys. Uh, so it's live and it's five o'clock on Wednesday. It'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll be published or streamed on the Orvis website uh, and here on uh, Orvis Facebook and Orvis YouTube. So you can see it anywhere you want. And, can come in and ask questions just like you do uh, with the fly time. Super. Do we know what we're tying next month? No. We don't yet. And it's my pick. Yeah, it's your pick. And we, we might have to talk uh, when we go offline about uh, date for next okay. month. Yep. So okay. we'll see. You're traveling. There. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, this next Monday, we're going to tie uh, one of my patterns, the uh, the uh, uh, rabbit's foot uh, PMD emerger, uh, which is which is a very popular fly with guides uh, all over all over the country, and uh, it's uh, timely because this is PMD time now, uh, both in eastern tailwaters and particularly in uh, the Rocky Mountains. So we'll be tying a P PMD. Uh, rabbit's foot emerger, even though I've heard rabbit's feet are getting really tough to tough to find, but hopefully people can find some of those. No questions? Anybody? Yeah, we're foam flies? We've tied a bunch of foam flies. I'm going to tie a foam fly sometime in the next month. I'm going to tie a hopper pattern. I can't read the questions. I can't even see them. How about two different size 22s, says Douglas. Yeah, we could do that. 22 yeah. Royal Coachman? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to think no. about that one. Yeah, no, no. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't either. But, yeah. uh, you know, a little bluing olive or something? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. I've, done, I've done 22. I think I did a 22 olive uh before uh douglas if you look at uh at the archives i think i did a very small hour than a 22 one time but we'll think about it we'll think about i i'll think about what we're going to do next i'm trying to think of a pattern that yeah. i know that flagler won't like so that because i need a <laughs> I need a win i haven't had a win in a while so oh, anyway. it wasn't that long ago yeah and Anyway, we want we want to thank you all for coming in. I know we had some new people. Um, welcome. I forgot I forgot the names, but uh, if you're if you're new to our tying sessions, welcome. Um, we love your questions. There were some there weren't a lot of questions today, but the ones that we had were great. So um, we appreciate you coming in, and um, it's we both enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And Tim and I will see you in a month, and I will see you by myself on Monday. I'm going to win on Monday. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not, not even going to go there. Do you guys uh, do any uh, weaving <laughs> flies? Do you do any weaving flies? I haven't woven uh, a fly in years. I, I haven't either. And I, I've been meaning to like on my yeah. YouTube channel and uh -huh. I, I go to do it and I, I just, I don't know. 
it, it is not it's hard really to photograph because you have to get you have to get yeah yeah yeah, yeah lengthwise or, and, yeah. and pointing toward you and everything else and at some time I'll do one. It's just, I, I don't really fish with them. And so I, I just always feel more comfortable tying flies that I fish with that I know. And, and, you know, uh, so, yeah. but yeah, so, someday woven flies. We'll yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll see you in a month and I will see you on Monday. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.